Hey there, Seguto Golfers, Tom Seguto here, and today we're talking about three of the best ways to practice golf and lower your scores instantly just from the comfort of the driving range. These are three ways to make your practice life a lot more exciting and have more fun and take your game from the range to the course. Are you excited? I know I am. Let's get started. One of the biggest problems golfers talk to me about is the fact that they can't take their game from the range to the golf course. It's like, I hit it perfect on the range all day. I hit it perfect when you're watching me, Tom. And they go out on the golf course and everything just falls apart completely off the tracks. Well, the problem is most golfers don't know how to practice. We know how to practice all the other sports like basketball, baseball, and tennis. But golf, we practice a little bit differently, and here's why. When you're playing baseball, usually there's a pitcher on the pitcher's mound, and you're inside the batter's box, and you're going to hit a baseball into a baseball field. Or in basketball, you're doing layups on a basketball court. However, in golf, we have a range, and then we have a course. So your brain's like, well, I'm at the range, I'm at the course. I'm at the range of the course. So you're never actually practicing in the environment you're playing in. And that's why step one to improving your game and having lower scores on the course, transferring your game from the range to the course, is to practice like you play. So the first step is what I like to call transfer practice, or practicing like you play. It's going to be different than what you're used to practicing. We're not going to be machine gunning golf balls back and forth, that's for sure. That's a waste of time and effort. So our first step is get warmed up a little bit. So that is normal, get warmed up, hit some shots. Sweet. Practice like we play. Well, how do we play? Well, we go to the first hole. For, first hole is usually a par four of some kind. We take our driver out, we rip it down the middle of the fairway and we wait 30 seconds to get to our golf ball. Then we hit our approach shot into the green, seven iron. Then we wait 30 seconds to get to our golf ball. Then we putt it out and make the birdie. Simple, right? When you practice on the driving range, what usually happens? I'm gonna hit a million golf balls in 10 seconds to show my buddies how cool I am. Well, that does nothing for you. It doesn't go over to the golf course that way. And then you wonder, why when you get to the golf course, nothing transfers? Because you're not practicing the right habits when you play. What we're gonna do here first is I'm going to create a par four out here on the golf course. So you look out here, there's all these beautiful targets, which you may or may not be able to see. Tons of them. Every golf driving range has flags somewhere. What I want you to do is pick out your tee shot for this golf hole. We're gonna do an imaginary golf hole, and for this case, we're gonna do something that's like straight down the middle. And the fairway is as wide as a flag out there and a flag out there. They're probably about 60 yards apart. My goal is to go right down the middle of the fairway. Then I'm gonna play my approach shot and we're gonna make a birdie. So my fairway is as wide as there's a blue flag on the right side guarded by a bunker there. And there is this white flag to the right. So it's about as wide as what you typically see on the fairway. It's a generous fairway for today. There's a tree right down the middle. That's the middle of the fairway. I'm going to go right at that tree. When you're practicing, you should behave just like you would on the golf course. We're not rushing things. You're going to go through your pre-shot routine, all that good stuff. All right, here we go. Got the shot tracker rolling. Let's get started. So my pre-shot routine, I usually do a practice swing behind the ball. I'm going at that tree in the distance right over the middle of that white flag. Ooh, a little too much draw, but fairway. Because the fairway is as wide as these two flags I set out there, so we're right on the left side of the fairway with a beautiful approach shot into the green. Now my ball is beautifully in the middle of the fairway, so I'm gonna get my range finder out, which by the way, I'm using this GoGo Sport range finder. I think it's one of the best value range finders on the market. I've been trying out their product for three or four months now. I've played like 15 rounds of golf with it. Very impressed because I know at this range they use these Bushnell range finders, the high quality ones. This thing's right on line with it. So for like 90 bucks, does the elevation calculation and everything. It's incredible. We're in the fairway, we're in the happy place. Go to your happy place, happy. I'm gonna get the range of that flag right down there in the middle. It's probably about 
150 or so. Oh, right on the dot, 150.1. Perfect. We're going to hit our approach shot, go through your routine again, and that flag is going to represent the middle of the green. So I'm going to go right at the middle of the green. Be good. Oh, it's right on it. Oh, yeah. And then, while you're walking up to your ball imaginarily, you're going to take a 20 second break. So, I did that between the tee shot and my approach because I'm going to walk to my ball. Sometimes 20 seconds if you're on a cart, a minute if you're on foot. Then, I'm going to take another break because when I'm playing golf, I'm not hitting a million balls consecutively. So I'm thinking about what's going on. What I'm going to strategize from the next shot here. I hit the green, I hit my target, so now I'm going to make a putt. I'll just give myself a birdie there because that thing really hit the stick. Yeah. Then we move on to our next hole. Let's say it's a par three. And I'm looking out there and there's a green flag. Looks rather beautiful. Let's take a look at it. All right, the green flag out there is guarded by a bunker. Looks like a dangerous par three. 188.2 with today's winds a little bit in the face. And I need about a five iron. Wind in the face, I want to make sure I get over that bunker. Do you see what's going on here though? I'm not playing driving range, I'm playing golf. So I'm strategizing, going through what's going on my mind in the course. So I'm playing golf. I'm not playing rapidly hitting golf balls at a bunch of random flags out there. Five iron. Oh, we gotta carry that bunker. Feeling the shot. Oh, that was hit. I'll be good. Be on it. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing like the feeling of a purely struck five iron. Thank you, GoGo Sport, for the yardage. Oh, that felt good. That was money. Now we're going to wait. We're going to walk up to our shop, make the putts, par three. You know, I'll give myself a par there because it looked like it was front edge, probably had about 15 feet. I'll take it, though. That felt good. All right, so now you got the idea of what this taking the game from the range of the course is all about. It's playing golf. This type of practice can have a huge effect on your golf game because it gets you in the mind of playing golf. When you go to the course and you go to the range, your mind tends to wander off into two different areas. On the range, you start thinking about a bunch of different flags. On the course, you're thinking about playing golf. You want those two to be the same, not different. So when you go to the range and you want to work on your game, you can work on your swing. But if you want to improve your playing, you play golf course here on the range because you can train your mind to think the way you want it to on the course. And when you miss a target, be hard on yourself and say, I'm in the rough. I gotta play a shot out of the rough. I gotta play this difficult shot under a tree, whatever it might be. We've done method number one. Method number two is all about having fun shaping the ball. Calling a shot, hitting a shot. And it gets you in the frame of mind what you need to do on the golf course. You're gonna be in different situations you need to hit the shot the situation demands. What I like to do is get a variety of clubs, lay them out, and I'm gonna say, I wanna hit this type of draw with a seven iron, or this type of fade with a nine iron. I'll show you how it works. Okay, so we've got that beautiful green flag out there that I just hit with that five iron. I'm gonna play the shot shaping game. What I'm gonna do is curve balls either to the right or left of the target. So draw or fade, push draw, beautiful fade, whatever I want. I'm gonna call the shots, high, low, fade, draw. And this is a lot of fun because you're not, you're not doing just random things. You're really focused practice here. So I know the shots I want to hit when I want to hit them. I'm going to call them out. So right now I'm going to go with a push draw. It's going to start right of the flag about 10 yards. It's going to curve back. All right, that's just about a one yard push draw. But it was an acceptable shot. All right, that's my five iron. I'm gonna put it away. I'm gonna hit a nice tight push draw. I want to start right of that tree there. 
I want to start at that tree and hit the tree. It says it's about 116 to hit the tree. So I'm going to choke down a little bit. I'm going to hit it like a low push draw. Hit the tree. Definitely have too much sauce with this club. Choking down, take off some yardage. Oh no, I pulled it. Felt good. All right, let's do it again. Oh, I pulled it even more. Darn, I want that tree. We're gonna get it, America. We're gonna get it. Face was just shutting down too quick. Don't do that. Don't do that. What are you doing that for? All right, here we go. Keep it quiet. Nobody talks. Oh yeah, that's much better. That's not gonna hit the tree, come on, touch it. Oh, all right, that was fun. Let's get the tree iron out. I love you, three iron. Please say you love me back. If you don't, our relationship will be really tragic. So what I wanna do here is just hit a stock three because I haven't hit it at all, like in a week. Should start at the target and draw back. Should is the operative word. Oh man, I was really sauced up. All right, so, wow, I hit that hard. So now I'm gonna take the same three iron and imagine I gotta hit it out of the woods, hit this low bullet. Here we go, right at the green flag. You get that low bullet, runs up on the green. Oop, catching myself. Low bullet. See the follow through? Here we go. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> that was cool. That was cool. That's something you can write home about. All right, I'm gonna do some more three iron work. Let's do like a stinger. Oh, same target. Just gotta really keep this thing down. It's gonna hurt some feelings. Just make some kids cry if you do it perfectly and in a good way. All right. What do we want? A stinger. When do we want it? Now. Oh, that was really awesome. Wow, really got that thing laced. Now that we know that that's happening, we could do it again. Let's get the fade this time. I, the fade is really not my strong shot, but let's get it. Yeah. That exploded off the face. You see what I'm doing though here? Practicing. I'm having fun. I'm not out here saying, oh, this is so boring. I just want to cry myself to sleep every night because I go to the driving range and I don't have any fun. No, you need to practice like this. Now here we got the Tom Schlinger. So Tiger's got the Stinger and I've got the Schlinger. I can hit this 90 degree post pattern hook off the planet, but it's really useful when you gotta go 90 degrees. And sometimes you're at a corner, you need to do it. Here comes the Schlinger. Just gonna dive left like you wouldn't believe. Start it at that tree. Whew. Got a... The Schlinger. <laughs> I had to hit this a couple times. Wait forward to maximize the in to out path, and I'm gonna swing so in to out. Man. Look at that. <laughs> I don't even know if the shot tracker is gonna pick that up. <laughs> okay. That was awesome. I don't know if the shot tracker could pick that up. Let me try it again. I don't know if it will pick it up. 
See the swing for that? Like so low and in, so into out. Oh man, it's great. That's the most end out I can swing without chunking it. <laughs> that's awesome. All right, that's a normal one. Golf is fun. Golf should be fun. Oh, yeah, ball. Wow, that was really lit up. All right, now it's time for practice method three, the major championship. What you're gonna do here is you're gonna put pressure on yourself. And with, what I mean by that is we're gonna play in the masters right here, right now. And you're gonna imagine a fairway line with people. And some of you are getting queasy about this because you think, well, my insurance only, only covers so much in liability. I might, I might hit too many people. Don't worry about it. They could be cardboard people. But the fact is, when you go out on that first tee with your buddies, you know that nerves are there. So we gotta practice with the nerves. You gotta put the pressure on yourself. Visualize fairways lined with people. Let's play some golf at the Masters. And I'm gonna play with Tiger Woods, make even more pressure. Whew. So my mind is feeling the pressure right now. Tiger just hit a shot right down the middle. And I'm just getting ready to hit. They just announced my name. Whew, man, that's a lot of people. That's awesome. So when you see all those people down there, you gotta zone the people out. Best way to do that is to focus, is to zero in on what your target is. Ask yourself what your target is. Don't think about the people. And when I put this pressure on myself, I legitimately feel the nerves. It's really interesting, but if you visualize it well enough, you will feel your muscles tighten up and everything what happens when you play tournaments. Yeah. I laced it right down the middle. A little push, might hit the tree branch on the right side of the fairway. Oh, that was long. Okay. I was aiming at that green flag. I hit it like 20 yards right. If you've ever been to Augusta, they get you close to that tree. So I think I might be good. That moves us into that little perch shot, like 139 or probably 140 going in. I don't have the exact figures, but we're gonna change our target up now. Tiger's gonna hit his shot, and I know he's gonna stick it close. He's played it a million times. This is my first time playing. 139, I gotta change up the target. Wow, 139.9. I'd say it's pretty accurate. <laughs> my ball's on the right side of the fairway at Augusta, and some kid just kicked it in the fairway out of the rough a little bit if it ended up in the rough. I don't need a full nine, but it is uphill, so I probably do. Yeah, I probably do. It's gonna play a little bit longer than 139. Stock shot, push draw. Oh, a little fat. Oof, I just stayed out there. All right, I came up short. You know what that means? Gotta get a range finder out. I'm gonna play a pitch shot to this basket right in front of me. 44.1. You can't use the range finders on the masters, but today we can. 44.1, take out the lob wedge. Try and get it in the basket, because that's my target. I've got to land it in the basket. I don't, ha I don't want to bounce it in. Okay, pitch shot. Doesn't take much, doesn't take much. What do you think, Caddy? Oh, I think you should hit it in the basket. Yeah, that's what I told you to do. That's what we're talking about. Keep 
keep it straight. Keep the arms straight, accelerate. Oh, I mean, I got it in the basket, but I bladed it. So now I've got to chip it again. I probably went past the green, we're gonna chip it. And they're fast greens, so I'm gonna chip it just to the front of this apron. Gotta reset. Okay, good. That would have rolled out the exact amount I wanted. So you can play the masters, put the pressure on yourself, put the galleries around you, it's a lot of fun. So here we're gonna go with some yardage practice. This is really valuable. This is where the range fighters can be very handy. This is one of my favorite ways to practice. So I've got my GoGo -Go Sport range finder, which I highly recommend you check them out. Link in the description below, get a discount. We're gonna shoot some yardage out there with some flags. And then I'm going to hit those flags using three different clubs. It looks like I'm going to go up to about 155 here and maybe 160. But I'll be probably using my short irons and varying the distances of my short irons and probably trying some longer clubs just to see how, how I can control yardages. Red flag, 63. Yellow flag, 129.9. White flag way out there. It says 207. Wow. You know, I actually believe it would be that far. All right, let's try it. So 129.9, typically hit a pitching wedge. So I'll start off with a club that I hit that distance. Here we go. Slight pull. Okay. It kind of distance. Let's do it again. Oh, I felt good. Make it rain. Whoop! Right on the middle of the green. That was nice. All right. Hit it with pitching wedge. Let's do it with nine iron. So I need to choke down a little bit. This is where you learn different trajectories, different shot options. A little bit lower flight, might have too much. Nope, right on it, nice. So if I have a windy day, I can keep the ball down, I can take out this nine iron and I know I can hit it 129.9 if I choke down a little bit, I don't swing as hard. Let's do it again. Well, this time, I want to fade it. Oh, that felt good. That might be right over it. Oh, yeah, a little short. Just a hair short. Not a bad result, though. All right, now we're going to go to do that with a 7 iron. There you are. 129.9 with a seven. Different ball game. So now we've got almost hit a punch shot. Can't hit it too hard, so not a really big backswing. Choking down, keep the arms straight, stock push draw. Oh, I pulled it. That felt good. Might have too much. Good direction though. Yeah, sailed it over. That probably went about 135. No, more than that, probably 140. So what I need to do, I need to slow it down. Slow it down. Less backswing. This is the tougher ones because the club is obviously too long for the situation. Mm, that felt good. A little bit far. All right, now we're gonna move back to that back flag. And it says 202, which is amazing. Five iron.
Oh, a little short. That's to be expected though. I'm not trying to swing on my shoes with this five. It is 202. I was, depth perception was off. A little push, but maybe that's where I'm aimed. Same spot. Oh, that felt good. Man, there's something about a five iron. Something about a five iron. Something about a truck. Felt good. All right, so that's five iron. It's not gonna get 202. It's okay. You see all the clubs? It's like a battlefield here. <laughs> this looks like a battlefield, like chucking all my clubs over the place. Look at that. Everything's just strewn out and about. That's what your practice area should look like if you do it right, because it means you're just expanding your horizons playing golf on the range. So Segudo Golfers, here are some fun ways you can take your game from the range of the course. As you saw me do today, play around with on-course simulation. The whole goal of this practice is to put yourself in the frame of mind. You'd be on the golf course, so your mind on the range is the same as on the course, so when you practice, you're practicing what you play. It's really important to do that, and when you do that, you transfer to the course, you have more fun, you lower your score. So. Hope you enjoyed this video on some new practice options you can take to the driving range, and I will see you in a future episode. Go check out the Go 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 Sport Range Finder. Take these strategies to the practice tee, and I will see you in a future episode. Have a rockin' week.